Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video and uh, just a quick, I guess, precursor or pre-word, forward, whatever. Um, yeah, I'm recovered from uh, COVID-19. I'm feeling much better. So thank everyone who uh, sent, you know, kind messages and comments uh, wishing me to get better. So it worked. <laughs> anyway, now that I'm back in the uh, swing of things, I thought I'd uh, just make a quick video today, actually. And this guy is uh, an MP3 player, well, MP4 player, I guess, um, that I bought a very long time ago. And I believe I did a teardown tube video on this, like, ages ago, uh, back when I had, like, maybe not even 100 subs. But anyway, basically, one of the times I took this apart and put it back together, I made a little boo-boo. There's a hold switch here, and you can see it's loose. There's nothing connected to it. And um, there's actually a micro switch inside. And when I put it back together one of those times, um, I didn't line up the switch. And so when I went to flip it, it actually broke off the mechanical bit of the switch. So right now, the body of the switch is still soldered, but it's missing the little plastic nub. And it's I, I just kind of stopped using this after a while. And I moved on to iPods and other things. So I never really got around to fixing it. And I thought... You know, mine as well. Why Why the heck not? I bought like a pack of like 20 or 30 of these um, SMD dual pole single throw switches. And these are like ubiquitous. Um, pretty much, you know, most modern electronics have a tiny little slide switch. We'll have one of these inside. And so they're really cheap. I think for like 20, it was like a dollar or something. And I, I might have bought like 40 of them or something. I've used quite a bit um, in my own projects, but they're dirt cheap. I bought these for actually the Ardu Boy VMU project. So I thought, why the heck not? And I've actually been going through. So for instance, this is a mini disc player that I got semi recently. And pretty much all of them have these like tiny little hold switches and they have one of these switches inside there. And I, I often find by these broken secondhand, I often find that the ones that have been opened have that switch broken. So as a due course, whenever I take, I buy one of these as is, I'll take it, I'll strip it down. I'll clean everything completely. I'll inspect everything. And I'll, I'll pretty often find that that little switch is broken. So I'll just go ahead and then just replace it. So I thought I'd do the same for this guy. And this guy, I believe it used to have little rubber things and I kind of got annoyed and I threw them out um, covering the screw holes. So it's going to be a lot easier to, um, to open uh, without them. So I guess we're just going to get into it. Okay. It's easy, easy enough. Just four small Phillips screws. Just put them to the side. And I guess might as well uh, heat up the iron there. And while that's going... It's been a while since I've opened this, but I think I remember using my fingernails or something at some point. There might be some tabs. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it still works. I just charged up. The battery was obviously dead. Oh yeah, I might want to take out the SD card just in case. Um, but yeah. Just gonna go through and uh, grab one of these guitar picks. Just save my fingernail. Yeah, just a few more clips. Okay, yeah, and the hold switch. Kind of a bit how you doing you don't remember this is the inside of it uh that's actually the reset switch sorry um just gonna take it out so i don't lose it because it's not really held in really by anything it, i i think i noted this on the teardown too it's really weird there's a second speaker grill and pads for a second speaker and amplifier they're just not populated <laughs> which is really weird um but yeah cost savings Anyway, it does have a 1200 milliamp hour battery, supposedly. Um, looks about the right size, so I'd say that's reasonable. That looks, well, about maybe 1000 milliamp hours. And just hard soldered to the board. We're going to try to do this uh, without removing this. Uh, we might have to. 
in general, you want to remove boards um, that you're soldering onto uh, from plastic enclosures so that you don't accidentally poke it and burn the plastic. Anyway, you can see right here is the culprit. And there's no, no nub. And that's exactly what I said. If you don't align the nub inside here, when you go to flip flip it the next time, it'll actually it'll shear it right off there because it's just a tiny little bit of plastic. And we'll grab a new switch. And this is it right here. It's absolutely tiny. There's just uh, four legs for the like outer shell. And then three legs are the actual electrical contacts that it switches between. You can see this has a white plastic nub. Sometimes they have a black one. That doesn't really matter. As a first uh, matter of course, what I'm going to do is actually remove the old one. And the easiest way to do that, quite frankly, is just put a metric ton of solder on there. Um, get it molten enough, and then you can start prying the old one off. It might not come off in one piece. It might break. Uh, but we'll, we'll do what we can. It might help to actually add a little flux. Because this might have uh, lead-free solder. Purpose is not to salvage this switch, obviously. It's just to get it the heck off. And all I'm doing is going around and I'm heating each of the pads. And yeah, it kind of self-destructed there. <laughs> Um, but I did not lift any pads, so that's kind of the important bit. And hopefully we can get this off in relatively one piece. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, not the cleanest. And the switch is, well, it was already destroyed, so kind of no loss there. Just got to toss that. And as you can see, my temp right now is at 680. And you, depending on how thick the board is and the copper thickness and how much solder, whatnot, and what type of solder, you might actually need to increase that temp. But I wanted to keep it as low as possible so that I wouldn't risk lifting any of the pads. And it looks pretty good. It doesn't look like I lifted anything. So we are going to go in with some uh, solder braid and just clean all the excess old solder off. Yeah, looks good enough. Okay. Now we're just gonna take a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol. Just give it a little squirt. And we're going to clean off those pads. And I'll get you a close-up in a second once I'm done scrubbing this. Okay. So, here's where we're at right now. Old switch is off. Pads are relatively clean. There's still some flux there, but... I'm going to end up adding some more flux when I go to solder the new part on. There are two little holes. You can see. You can see there's two little holes in the PCB itself. And that's actually where the, uh, the new switch, there's little pins on the bottom for mechanical stability, and those will align. So what we are going to do is put it back down. I'm going to get a little tiny bit of flux on there. Just on the pads. Doesn't need a lot. And we're going to get our part. And make sure that the switch is actually aligned with the notch <laughs> this time. We're just going to lay it on there. Not absolutely critical, the alignment. Just get as straight as you can. And we're going to just 
Get a dab of solder on the tip of your iron. Press down on the switch and then heat up just one or two of the shoulder pads there just to get it to stick. And we're going to do the other two shoulders and always press down while you're doing these. We're just tacking right now, so we're going to come back with some more flux to make sure that the solder is actually nice, strong. On there, but just got to hit all the legs in the back. Those look fine. And for the four points on the outside, you actually probably will need to turn up the temp of your iron. I'm going to bump mine up to like 730, 740, um, because those are connected to the ground plane, and that sucks quite a bit. Of heat away so I bumped it up to 750 it's climbing right now let's hit the set point so now just gonna grab some extra solder and grab each of these pads just hit them one more time Okay, push this back down to my regular temp, and looks like we're good to go. So here you can see the switch, and when I move the outer switch, it moves the nub. So yeah, we're pretty much good to go. I'm just going to swab this all down again with some fresh, uh, fresh Q-tip and isopropyl just to get all that flux off. And this should be good to go, so give me a second for that. And look how beautiful that is. Nice and clean. And well soldered, so this should work. So it's on hold right now. So I have the reset switch in. I'm just going to carefully close this back up and snap it together. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's easier angling it from the front, putting those clasps on first, because that reset button... They didn't really design it right. It keeps wanting to pop out. All the other buttons are retained, um, so they don't try to fly out except for that one. That was a pain. Anyway, uh, we have it on hold. Let's try turning it on. I forget if it'll let you turn it on. Oh, okay, yeah, you can see. It says it's on hold. Switch it off. Uh, this should be unlocked now. Let's turn it back on. Looks like it's turning on. Wait for it to boot up. God, I haven't used this in years. We're going to switch it on hold, detects hold, switch it off, goes away, switch it back on. None of the buttons do anything. Switch it off. And there we go. <laughs> so yeah, that was easy. I just have to put in the four screws and this is fixed for all intents and purposes. So yeah, for... Something like, what was it, like 20 switches for a dollar, so five cents each. So for five cents in parts and just a little bit of time, I did this in real time in this video and we're just about at like 16 minutes right now. Most of it's been me waffling on. But yeah, uh, realistically, if you have a little experience in soldering, some flux, uh, isopropyl alcohol, some solder, some soldering braid, not strictly necessary, but that helps a lot you can easily replace hold switches um, or well, tiny little micro switches in general. If you happen to break them when you're taking something apart or you're repairing something, you find one that's broken. So I know, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this semi quick video. Um, <laughs> not really quick about coming up on like 17 minutes right now. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.